have helped me the most. I have been in the industry for 20 years. I started off self-published and then I got a book deal with an imprint of a major house. And that helped of course expand my reach. And the book that put me on the map is dun, 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 dun. Every Woman Needs a Wife. Uh, I self-published and then I gave away 50 free copies of the self-published version of this book at Book Expo America. Back then, that is where a lot of authors got their book deals from, which was an industry uh, event that was held in New York, sometimes in Chicago and different places, but mostly in New York. It was called Book Expo America. And because of these interesting times that we live in, this year they did not have one. I think they tried to pull one off virtually. But in the effect that you can't um, get out to do book signings and get to meet people, a lot of times now we have to do things online. This year we did the, and I will talk about we, my biggest, I guess they say if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a tribe. And I want to introduce you to one of the biggest things that have helped me with my level of success is having a tribe. And these are the members of NK's Tribe Called Success. They're all a blend of uh, New York Times, USA Today, national best-selling authors, and authors who are just coming out of the gate. And combined, our efforts, we were able to do many things uh, over the pandemic that would help uh, give us visibility. Uh, we did one event where we had 75 authors. It was the Cavalcade of Authors. We had all of these wonderful authors that were there for the event. Um, and we did interviews with each one. We also did a hosted an event where we had reviewers and bloggers and things of that sort from NetGalley, uh, Shannon Harper, Chandra Sparks Blonde, King Brooks, all of these people that came to tell us how to tell authors how they can get their books more visibility uh, to approach bloggers and interviewers and things of that sort to give them more visibility. If their, their blog has 200, 300, 400, 500 people, when they post about your book, your book is put in, to, in front of a lot of people who aren't in your immediate circle. So um, that is something that you wanna consider. We also did and hosted an event um, during the cavalcade that had uh, New York Times bestselling author, Sylvia Day. And when she blasted it out to her people, um, she put it on her, uh, was on Twitter, on Facebook, she shared it. It was a lot more people that signed up for an event. For that cavalcade event, we had over a thousand people register for that event uh, that took place over a four day, four day period. So it was mostly time and promotion with all of these people, all of the authors, my tribes, that we did those and it led into other events such as the reader appreciation event that we did with some more authors that we brought in that had a different branding, um, romantic suspense, um, paranormal, things of that sort. So it could branch us out, even though we write contemporary fiction, women's fiction, Christian fiction, it helped to bring us to a different audience. Uh, and that was a, a major, major thing, as well as we hosted two separate events that were geared toward, um, one was towards uh, women, uh, love is an inside job. And we brought several best-selling and award-winning authors and people you see New York Times best-selling author, Mary B. Morrison there, uh, as well as Betty Clausen, if you don't know who she is. She um, founded the school here in Chicago, Dudley Beauty College. Yes, Dudley is still a thing. Your parents, your mom, your grandparents, they all know who Dudley was. And then we also brought in New York Times bestselling author Stephen Barnes and Daniel Black and had an event hosted by Shakira Sean and my number one son, J.L. Woodson. So those events appeal to different people and it brought us more visibility. Uh, and additionally, we, we recorded all of those and we put them on a YouTube channel. So now all of these are, are immortalized uh, in video, all of the clips, we did them all separately. 
and they, we have a YouTube channel and all of a sudden people were subscribing to it so they can go in and watch and see these at any time. And we promote the, vi the videos individually and as a channel. So when it went live, it was just an awesome thing. So here, I'm gonna, if you have questions, I want you to drop them in and I will answer it. But for now, I will tell you some of the things that have made us uh, even more to, to gain the visibility, to get new people on our mailing list, uh, to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, in different places. Um, and it was doing giveaways. Let me show you a couple of those. Doing these giveaways, we were able to collect um, the emails, um, and what types of book the readers like to read. You know, they were attracted to, you know, the books. Um, here's one from Pat George Walker, George J. Walker, I better say it correctly or she's gonna spank me. Uh, and she is old enough to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, giveaways. Giveaways are an awesome way of collecting email addresses or also running an ad on your Facebook page to advertise your giveaway to more visibility. You know, even though it's like waving a carrot in front of them, hey, we've got these books to give away or we've got this Amazon gift card. That is a profound thing to, it's just a little bit of money, but it makes it more visible when they come to collect the gift card or whatever. You can also, when you give it away on Amazon, you can drop it in and say, hey, follow me on these different platforms. And that's a key thing, but you collect the email addresses. Uh, you'll get more people liking your, your Facebook page or your Instagram and all of these things. So my thing is doing different things that, especially now, since we can't get out and go and do events, we have to find creative ways in order to connect with readers. Now, one of the biggest things that I find that um, has also helped with the process, I'm trying to keep the screen here so I can see you guys is making yourself visible. I see you see behind me, I have this Zoom now and I have this virtual background where I um, have my books. My book covers are uh, created except for Every Woman Needs a Wife. They were all created by JL Woodson of Woodson Creative Studio. Having awesome cover designs is the first thing. The title, the cover, the blurb, opening line, Getting something to capture the attention of the reader is paramount. Someone posted uh, yesterday in a group that they needed a short read because they're trying to get their last few books in for their count or their quota for the year. And I posted, my time in the, in the sun is a short read. And I said, well, my time in the sun. And the opening line is, I cut him until I felt better. Do you know the opening line is what made those people go? It was like three or four people that come in. I got to get this book. I got to get this book. It wasn't the cover. It was the opening line. So don't discount that having all of those factors in. The titles, the cover. Your book has to speak for you when you can't speak for yourself. They don't get to hear you tell about it. Your cover, your title, the blurb. And please don't write like a billion words in your blurb try to tighten it up in one paragraph. And that first line of your blurb, remember when you go on Amazon, you only get to see the first two lines and then they have to click to see more. Well, you've got to make them want to see more. So make sure those openings are, are tight and people want to um, click on to buy your book or find out more about it. As I say, the cover, the title, the back blurb, the opening line, the opening paragraph, the opening page, the opening chapter, you gotta keep the reader to hook, hook them and keep them. Here's some examples right now of rebranding yourself. If your covers aren't tight, people are going to choose covers that really appeal to them and titles. Are you can get them with a good cover, you keep them with good content. So let me show you some of the uh, rebranding that was done over the uh, this interesting times as I call it. This is Shakira Rashawn, my brother in the pen, and he did in service to the Senator. So he hired my son to give him a rebranding. And this is the new cover to the right. Well, my right, uh, which is here with this big old V in the center in service to the Senator. And then he redid the cover for Love, Lust and Beautiful Lies, which is here, it has this smoky gray, 
bluish tint to it and it looks a little more uh, mainstream. And that's what uh, he was going for because the content is the bomb, but the covers were a little questionable. So we have here another one. Now the covers aren't bad on this. Don't get me wrong on this one. The covers weren't bad, but you could not distinguish. It was a series. You barely could distinguish because the colors were so close together. Uh, you couldn't distinguish that these are two separate books. Yes, the sugar, sugar coated and then deadly. So my son did the remake of these. He refurbished them, refurbished, remade them, revised them. And we have sugar coated deception here. So the woman that's the different element is here. Here, the detective is now here. So it gives it that look that you know that they are part of a series, but they're two different, um, two different books. And here, Michelle Sims had hers redone. I have the befores up top and the, and the afters. The son, my son did the ones on the bottom. So he took some of the same elements here. We have the um, saxophone, still has the saxophone, where it takes place in location. My son reads the blurb and some of the chapters to get a feel for the book before he recreates. And he tried to keep it in order of, cause it's about music. It's about this heat and this fire uh, and this genetic makeup of these characters. It's very key. And that's what really helped it to pop and shine. One last cover here. And then I'm gonna look to see if some questions have been dropped in. Um, is here Stephanie Freeman. She writes uh, thrillers, mysteries, suspense, all of that. So she had, the first cover was done on the left-hand side was done by the publishing house she was with. And then when she got the rights back and the publishing house closed, she did her own cover. Well, all the way on the end with this one big diamond in the center, unfinished business. This is my son, J.L. Woodson, Woodson Creative Studios. He redid her cover and rebranded her. Same thing with Nature of the Beast. Here, the middle is the self-published version. And then here is Nature of the Beast. Um, he did that cover. Those appeal. People say, don't judge a book by a cover. And my son said, I spent all this work to make sure the cover is something that makes people pick that up. So those are things you definitely, definitely want to consider. And oh, might as well get in a shameless plug. Hold on here. These are my covers that he did. Um, some of them he redid and uh, they have a look, a branding. The, the titles are big. You can see them if you're saying uh, standing six feet away, you can see the titles. He, uh, he did all of the covers except for Every Woman Needs a Wife. So that was done uh, when I was with an imprint of Simon & Schuster, but covers are everything. So now I'm looking here, I'm refreshing and trying to make sure I see any of the questions here, and if not, I'll go into the next segment. Uh, I just see, loved it. Awesome Q&A information session. So let's get on to some other things since I do not see any questions. Hey, mom. Hey, hey number one son, I see you. Uh, Marie, um, author. Uh, who was that? Uh, Kim Robinson. Hey, how would one be able to participate as an author in the Cavalcade of Authors? you would need to send me Lisa Woodson, L-I-S-S-A-W-O-O-D-S-O-N at AOL.com. Lisa Woodson at AOL.com. Let me just drop it here in the group. Lisa Woodson at AOL.com. You need to send me your bio, uh, your website, and a sample, uh, the first three chapters of your book along with the cover, and a request to participate. Um, yes, Stephanie, I see you. J.L. Woodson did an awesome job. Yes, he did on your covers. Let me go into something else that has helped to expand our brand as a tribe and me individually is doing, being part of a series, coming up with a high concept series that can help with the process of getting you um, further, how can I say, visibility. This one here, the Kings of the Castle. Man, look at those covers, those are boss. These are all done by different authors. We did the first book, The Kings of the Castle. Everyone contributed to that particular one to introduce the series. But each one of these series were written as a standalone. People can read them in any order. And every 
author brought their flavor to it. And then at the very top, we have a cookbook that is inspired by the Kings of the Castle. It's fit for a King cookbook. And we invited several other New York Times and national bestselling authors to kick in and to give their favorite recipes. But the difference in this cookbook being done by authors is of course, between each recipe, we have an excerpt of one of the Kings of the Castle, of the Kings of the Castle books in between. So they get a taste of it. It's not a full chapter. It's just 750 words or so, as well as links in there where people can purchase it. They can click right there in the cookbook and it'll take them straight to Amazon to purchase. That has been, that cookbook has been downloaded uh, oh, so many times, over, over 300 times. And we also have the, <laughs> Helen Gibson said, I can usually spot a J.L. Woodson cover. Yes, you can. He does have uh, a distinct style. We also have the Knights of the Castle, which is the second series that came out this year. Um, we have the Queens of the Castle that are coming next year. So we have a whole new set of authors. Well, there is a couple of people who were in Kings of the Castle that wrote for Knights of the Castle, but we brought a new group of authors in that brought a different flavor. The Knights are edgier, but here we have the cover concept and they drop in, in rapid release. Rapid release is something that happens when you have them come out like um, within two weeks of each other or the or once a week or whatever until it they're all dropped. It depends on the size of the book. So I, I just learned about rapid release. And I will tell you uh, the series, uh, the first series about 7,000 copies so far. Um, no, I'm sorry, almost 8,000. That is phenomenal and independent because it also impacts the sales. Not We have written inside of the Kings of the Castle the, the authors worked in characters from their other books that are outside of the series that will help readers, they get a taste of those characters in there and they'll want to buy their other books. My sales for Loving Me For Me went up exponentially when the Kings of the Castle released because he's mentioned as a character, uh, walk-on character in King of Devon. And it was, a, man, I cannot tell you. I love the cookbooks. Thank you, Lakeisha. Hi, how you doing? Um, we also did, um, putting together this, let me show you. Anthologies are a good way to get exposure because then like in this one, it will be nine to 10 authors. These are 10 people promoting the same thing in different channels that are outside of your circle. And it's in your, get a taste of writing in a different genre. So say you hadn't written in erotica and you want to, you just do it and, and you have other people pushing a particular one particular product and it goes a lot further than you would on your own. We also did a mystery one. Let me share the screen for that one. And that is the mystery one. Uh, once again, several authors, some of them had never written in um, mystery before mystery suspense. So you get a little taste of doing it as well as marketing and promoting one project or one series at a time, it expands your visibility and your reach. And it is an amazing, amazing thing. So we talked about those in the anthologies. I am opening it up for more questions while we wait. Um, okay, I can spot a Jay Wilson cover. Yep, yep, yep. Let me share something else, giving giveaways. Here's one from, here we go, my brother in the pen. Share the screen. Freebie. Free book offer, his book, um, The Perfect Lesson. And it's done in such a way, when you click on this link here, you can click on it, but it also help, gives him the ability to capture email addresses. I cannot stress how important it is for you to have your own subscriber list or newsletter to stay in touch with your readers, uh, collecting those because if Facebook goes away, if Instagram goes away, how are you going to stay connected to all of the people that have been interested in your book? Amazon, yes, you know, they will, but they own those email addresses. They own that material, that's their property. How do you get them to come to you? Email addresses. You collect that no matter what platform goes down, 
you still have a connection to um, those readers who have expressed interest in you. Ebony, you say, I love anthologies. I found a lot of new authors whose work I would have never been exposed to otherwise. Right, it's a good way to sample. It's like an appetizer for words. You know, you, you know how you go into, what is that, Sam's Club or Costco, and they have those people sitting around there and they're giving a sample of your, uh, of, of different things that they're showcasing in the store. That is what anthologies are. You, for a little bit of money, you get to taste a, a lot of bit of authors and you can say, hey, I like the way this person writes and I will go and see what else that they've written. So it is a phenomenal tool to do that. Let me show you a little bit about the cookbook. Oh my God, the cookbook. We just did this new one. To, this goes for the, uh, the Knights of the Castle, uh, only for one night. Uh, we have one that is fit for a king. So you get it only for one night, the Knights of the Castle, fit for a king, kings of the castle. Yeah, corny, whatever. But this has been the most profound thing that has happened as far as marketing and promotion. Doing a cookbook, getting some author friends together, putting the recipes and excerpts of your book. This was an uh, idea that came to us from Sierra London. And this is our fourth cookbook. We did Sugar and Spice uh, cookbook, was a holiday cookbook last year. We did, no, the year before, that was two years ago. Then we did um, Just One Kiss, Just One Taste, which was a summer cookbook. And we chose different authors each time that were outside of the tribe circle. We've had BM Harden, we've had um, Christina Jones, we've had different people outside of our normal circle that are in the cookbook. And it has, when they promote it, then that means that their readers also get a little taste of us. So if cookbooks have been an awesome way of, of getting us out there, but let me show you one of my freebies. This is Sugar Ain't So Sweet and I'm gonna put it in the group. Over 2,530 people have downloaded my free book. Um, not, the, not just the one that was on Amazon, it was also on Amazon. And I've done it free there, but I do it free here. And here's why. Uh, this is a link, a bit.ly link that I have here where I can track where people have been downloading it. Over 200 people around this time, just this week alone to, and all the places where they picked it up from, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and other places. Look at, let's look at this, 2061 people outside of the United States and Canada and United Kingdom, outside of those places, downloaded a free copy of Sugar Ain't So Sweet. And my thing is, those are people I would not have connected with. I ran a, you know, ads on Facebook. I've given it away during takeovers. Uh, <laughs> you made that sweet potato pie. It was the bomb.com, I feel you. Uh, did you use um, eggnog or did you use the uh, Bailey's Irish cream? That is my, my kick. So my sweet potato pie recipe is in only for one night. So uh, I also have my kick ass macaroni and cheese recipe in fit for a king. So, and it also endears like, she'll remember it. That's where I got that recipe from. So doing simple things. And these are things that don't cost you anything. All of this was electronic. It was very, uh, you use Bailey's. Way to go, lady, you lush. <laughs> so all of these things factor in to, I didn't have to do a budget. It required time. It required effort. So we look at ways at doing this right before, I think it was last week, we were here in ICU and we did a takeover. Of, this takeover was just the games of one gotta go. My son hooked me on that game and uh, I've been with it so the tribe created their own questions of one gotta go. And we posted it in the group for people to play all of the time. And it was, uh, it was an amazing, amazing, lot of fun, lot of fun. So I'm just wanting to make sure, and I'm gonna drop some links in the group right now, the freebie, I'm gonna uh, drop that in for Bitly. Um, and I also showed the freebie from Shakir. And then, hold on, let's go sugar free let's go for sugar right here all right sugar for real 
Yeah, I had so many links I had to do that so I can tell which one was which and drop it in the link in the group right here. There we go. This is a free book. And the difference in my free book and in some of the other free books that people give away, mine is a short story that gives people a taste of who I am, but it also has sample chapters of my other books inside. So once they finish the, uh, the Sugar Ain't So uh, Sweet, they can read Open Door Marriage, Loving Me For Me, Every Woman Needs A Wife. They can read all of those and they, they have the clicks, right, the links right there for Apple, Kobo, all the different places where they can go and buy it straight from them. The PDF is interactive. So that is um, uh, one of the important things to, to recognize uh, of doing is to uh, have a way for readers to purchase right then. If you got them, make, have them click right there, then and there for them to download uh, the book. And it's something that people, other people can share it. You know, if they get it free, they can, it's a PDF, they can send it to any of the other book clubs and we encourage that, you know, and, and that is a key point. Let me see if I can show you guys I talk about them often. Let's get a little shameless plug work in here. But as I'm waiting for the more questions to come through, let me share the screen. Where is it? This is number one son. That is number one son throughout his career. He started writing when he was 15, got a book deal from Simon & Schuster. It was the imprint of Simon & Schuster, was nominated for NAACP Image Award. I put the majority of my royalty money into marketing and promoting us and we did a little mini tour, Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, different places. And it was interesting because we see a lot of female authors and there's very few male authors um, that are in our circle. Like we only have two brothers in the pen in the tribe, it's mostly women. So we have Shakir, we have my son, JL Woodson, but he had more speaking opportunities. Uh, he was invited to speak at the Harlem Book Fair and all that stuff, but it was his book. When you're looking at success, it was his book that got him into Fisk University. And once again, in South Carolina State of uh, years later, but it isn't always translated into sales. It trans success is also translated into opportunities. And when you think of that, that I want, I want people to really understand that they're looking at all oh, the dollars hitting their account. It's more than that. Okay. Can you talk about the sample pamphlet that you gave out at NBC? That will forever be etched in my head. Okay, that we did a sampler. Um, each one of the tribe paid for the printing of this sampler booklet that we were able to give out. And I find that when people, this, and once again, people getting a taste of who you are in order to, um, they don't have to make a commitment. They can, they can read different people and say, oh, I, I like this person or, oh, I'm really, I'm really feeling this person. So getting the samplers done and not coming all out of my pocket. We had about, about 2000 of them done or whatever. And we gave them out everywhere. They were just on the table. People can take them, you know, uh, at that conference, there's mostly book clubs there. So we were able to give them each person, one of their own. And because it's done and printed so nice, it's less likely that they will toss it. It's more likely that they will share it with some rather than toss it. It's just an excerpt. They had to do 700 words. It has a picture of the cover and the website where they can find out more about each author. We did them year after the year. But I think the cookbook, because of the pandemic or however, um, the cookbook has kind of uh, taken the place of the, the pamphlet, it's a little something uh, more. It's a little something more. So um, I'm waiting on a little bit more questions. So if not, I will kind of wrap this up earlier. I've told some of our, uh, as they say, tricks of the trade, but I want to be able to help authors who have questions that can help them in their process. You know, marketing and promotion is the thing that kind of is tough for most authors, they say they can do the writing part of it, but it's the it's the editing, um, not the editing, it's the marketing and promotion part of it. The editing is brutal, I will say that. Um, but those are the things that tend to be the hardest things for them is to 
uh, market and promote and knowing when you don't do it alone. If you get, get a try, you know other people who are writing. Writing can be a solitary thing that's you're in your, your, your room or on your computer, you're doing all of this, but marketing should be a group effort because let's take it for instance, we were going to do, we were asked to do because we had done marketing in Black Women's Expo. We had taken out full page ads in the program book and we had done it two years in a row. So naturally they came to us when it was time to do a literary cafe. They asked us to do the literary cafe because they saw what our work looked like and they kept seeing that we were sponsoring and promoting them as far as being there or being part of being in their program books, well, they asked for us to do that event. It didn't come out this year, but we had been putting in that work for two years prior. And it was, it's an amazing thing. That would have been 30,000 people. Uh, and all of those readers, we say 10% of those would be readers. And wow, how much out, outreach would that have been? So we, of course, would have had those pamphlets done, Ebony. The same ones you saw, we would have had those done to give out to everyone. All of the tribe would have put in money for the print costs. Say that the a booklet is 20 um, pages and then the printer gives us a price and we divvy it up um, to the cost rather than it becoming coming out of all my pocket at once. Here is my freebie, by the way, I'm pulling this down. That's my freeze, freebie, sugar ain't so sweet. Yep. Okay. Let me answer Jeffrey Rochelle's question. Hold on. Stop the share. That's my freebie. Make sure you pick it up. Okay. Hey, Nelena, when you're at a book fair, do you gather info about that event to know how many of your books to bring with you to sell? <coughs> okay. So when I'm at a book fair, I ask, first of all, how many, you can see online what that book fair was like before the year before, you know, you could try to go to the established ones, how many people were there, you can see the authors that participated, you may be friends online with some of those people and you can say, hey, you know, how was it? For me, I generally start between 50 books to 100, depending on um, the attendance. Now, sometimes some event planners will kind of flub the numbers. Um, for my book, let's take Cavalcade of Authors. Cavalcade of Authors is not a huge event, but we have book buyers that come and they will, authors, independent authors will sell more than if they had gone to the bigger events. Because my goal is to cultivate authors, grown ass women and men, but it's mostly women that come, that have that expendable income, that they will buy a book from every person in every author that attends. And here's how I pulled that off. Every author, whether they're in New York Times, USA Today, they all get five minutes to speak on Friday, five minutes. And I'm key on that, five minutes to speak. I think if you can't sell it in five minutes, you don't need 50. They get to hear all of the authors and make a decision versus having to compete. Oh, this author's on it this time, this author's on it that time. And it splits the focus of the readers. So readers and authors alike get to hear everything and everybody. Then the next day they get to read, every author gets to read five minutes um, uh, during the event, the breakfast event. Then they spend time touring with each other. Then that evening we party. What I'm come to find is that people don't buy the book, they buy the, buy the author. So then they've, they've been hanging with that author all uh, weekend, just having a good time. And it isn't about buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. They really fall in love with the author. Readers fall in love with the, the authors and it's been amazing. There's been one, we were at the uh, Atlantis Resort when I gave the cavalcade at the Atlantis Resort, Resorts. And um, it was Pat, Pat was on the bus, um, a shuttle bus going into town with one of the authors, S.L. Jennings. And she asked her, well, are you coming to the cavalcade next year? And she says, and S.L. said, well, you know, I'm not sure. You know, it depends on whether I'm sponsored or not. She said, so Pat said, oh, you're gonna be there. That woman plunked down airfare, hotel, everything to make sure that author was there. 
that's the kind of connections that can be made. And that's what you want. You want people that believe in you. We've had beta readers who have been with us forever and they have sponsored some authors to be part of the anthologies and be part of the series. That's the kind of connections that you want. Hold on. So you bring the amount. If it's a smaller attendance, you bring 20 to 50. Larger, 50 to 100. And then you price your books to sell. Your books may be $15, but everybody's selling it for $15 around you. But if you cut your price to 10 or you've got more than one books, two for 20. What you want to do is make sure everybody walks off with your book and information about your book. Because if they read your book, you believe in it enough that they're going to buy up and tell other people about it. Another thing that stuck, Ebony says, another thing that stuck out was you didn't wait for readers to come to you. We had no idea who you were, but you made yourself stand out by being mobile and interacting. Yes, the days of authors sitting behind a desk, waiting for people to come to them are over. You got to put that hustle in. And for me, that's moving all four cheeks and a couple of chins. And that means everywhere I go, <laughs> I am promoting. I have bookmarks. I have, even if I'm, if I'm in the hospital, I leave them for the nurse's station. If I'm at a restaurant and even in the drive-thru, hey, I got a sample chapter for you. I have probably readers, I've only met that one instance. And that, that's a key thing. So everywhere you go, it isn't a matter of just pushing yourself on people. You just, you know, politely go to FedEx Kiko's, dropping it off, UPS store, dropping off. They have places for you to put flyers there. I put samplers there. So you don't necessarily have to go to book fairs in order to get um, your, um, get people to get their read on. Also cover your own backyard. Now that you've published your book, you have a skill set that people are looking for do an event, a publishing or a writing event at your local library. Why? Because your libraries will advertise that you're doing it to in their little newsletter or sometimes in the community newspaper. And that's more visibility to you. Cover your own backyard. There are ways for you to actually market and promote yourself without costing your arm and a leg and a couple of toes. Um, have, Ebony says, girl, you just wrote a whole paragraph. Having a tribe with everyone on the same page is important. The giveaway you all did with ICU reading and the wrap up that was tailored to ICU reading was pretty sweet. The tribe rushed in like army ants, <laughs> played with us and signed out the unity speaks volumes. That was, that's hilarious. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell the tribe about that. I'm taking a picture of that. Army ants, that's hilarious. But the thing about it is you gave us a window of time you said, can't do a full takeover. Now in other groups earlier that day that let us do a full takeover, we started at nine o'clock, my hours from nine to 10. And I promoted, uh, we had excerpts, we had giveaways, um, raffle copters, all of those things for my hour. And then when my hour left, I said deuces. And then the next author came in from 10 to 11. Then the next author from 11 to 12. And we did that all the way till that evening where we played games. So you guys got the fun in games, um, but normally the other places got live bingo. We played play one got to go live as well as book bingo. And that was uh, fun. <laughs> she said, thank you. You should never be out, with some, out without some material. If you being an author isn't a hobby, everyone should know you're an author. Who was that that said, you keep hustling till everybody knows your name? That's, that's what you have to do every day. I'm hustling, hustling. Okay, don't say that. Anyway, uh, Tina, I met you 10 years ago at Essence. You are so personable. Oh, hush. <laughs> ah, hey, boss. Hey, Nita. How you doing? Thank you guys so, so much. We've got 15 minutes. If there's some authors in the house, please get those questions in. I normally do not do free. So uh, <clears throat> this is the time. Let me check it on the iPad. Maybe it's something that I'm not able to see on um, the screen here. And doo -doo 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 -doo. let me go into, what is it? I see you reading and chatting. Here we go. This is my group. It says, let me go in here and see if there are questions there that I can't see. Reading and chatting. Here we go. 
Okay. Yep. I think I got everything. Hi, Nina. Anita. I see all of that. Um, author Kim Robinson. She said no sound. I don't see any other questions. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I can tell you because it's supposed to be a live Q&A, which is me answering everyone else's questions, uh, more so than me just talking up a storm. But since that doesn't seem to be the case, let me show you guys something for authors that I think, let me pull it down and Now here's the thing, we talk about marketing, traditional pros and cons. Um, the difference between traditional publishing and self and indie publishing. With traditional publishing, you have wider distribution, but you have less control over the covers, less control over the content, less in royalties, uh, ownership, and you have limited marketing. A lot of authors made the mistake of believing that when they got with a major house that they didn't have to do as much marketing. So we have authors that we have found that didn't even have a newsletter or mailing list. They've been in the industry a uh, cabillion years and everything was going through uh, the publishing house. So they didn't have the things when, like say when Kamani cut loose all of the authors that they did because they, they killed that line. And I don't understand that, but hey, you know, black folks didn't start, start stop reading, you know? So they didn't have their marketing you know, ca capturing all those email addresses and all of the things that could keep them connected to the people that was interested in their work. So I cannot tell you enough, being present where your readers are. There was that versus that happened between Monica and Brandy and it was so well attended. Um, but here's the thing. And then we had Patty LaBelle and Gladys. Well, let me tell you, I believe there were just as many people interested in Patty and Gladys, but the platform was not one where their main fan base was. You know, I'm sure there were a lot of parents and grandparents, tell me about this Instagram thing. And they had people around one machine, 20 people around one machine watching the verses, uh, the, the whole thing play out. You have to be where on platforms where your readers are. You have to have an Amazon. Uh, Central Amazon author page. You do that through Amazon Central. You have to be on Instagram. You have to be on Facebook. If you're not that versed in social media, get yourself a virtual personal assistant. I finally had to fess up and realize I cannot do everything. Contrary to popular, my own popular belief, I have to get somebody to handle the social media. And she works, she does all of tribe members. Her name is um, Marie Lackey. And your virtual, your angel VPA, virtual personal decision, your angel VPA at gmail.com. She does it for all the tribes. She handles our Facebook page, our Twitter. She handles our Instagram. Uh, all, and the thing about it is, it means it keeps our algorithms tight on all three of those platforms. Because what happens if you have a Facebook author page and you do not keep it active, your algorithms die and it takes a, it's like starting an engine you let it sit and get cold out there in the winter. We just got snow, by the way. I looked out there, we had snow. You let it go cold and it takes a lot more to start it up. So you keep your algorithms, you keep something on your Facebook fan page every day. And if you're asking me what a Facebook fan page is, you need a Facebook fan page. That's strictly your author page. Do not go on there putting your social consciousness it's strictly about the books, all about the books, about the books. That's it. Books, excerpts, things of that sort, upliftment, all of those things. Keep your politics out of it. Keep your religion out of it. Books. You need to have one. Instagram, you need to have one. There are people who left Facebook to go to Instagram because it's less drama. It is more picture driven. Facebook is more interactive. And you find me more on, on Facebook. I am now in Clubhouse. So if you're in Clubhouse, follow me in Clubhouse. I'm at, at Nelena Kai. The spelling of my name. Hey, you get that? You also want to pick up this book right here. Bearing it all, the ins and outs of publishing. This is the one book that I wish I had when I first started in the industry. It is an amazing, amazing 
book uh, that tells everything from writing, editing, uh, interior book design, graphic design, everything you would need the quick and dirty on um, getting published, writing and publishing. If I had this book when I first started, it would have saved me trial and terror. Uh, what is Clubhouse? Clubhouse is a new social media app right now. It's only on Apple. And like the other day, I think his name is Shaka Zangor. He was on, you can drop in on conversations anywhere. It is voice driven. Unlike Instagram and Facebook, it does not require a lot of attention. You can hit on, you see somebody, oh, you're gonna notice that um, there's somebody speaking that you wanna hear, you can drop in and listen. It's like a party line, but it's voice only. No photos being put up other than in your profile. Uh, no, not a lot of text, it's, it is voice and it is wonderful and it's an app. Uh, you'll know it's the right app because you see it's this, yep, this black man with a fro and Clubhouse, voice activated right now for Apple only or iPad. Um, and eventually I'm sure they'll roll out the Android because Android folks are pissed. But you can only get in by invite only, but go ahead and apply because while you're on the wait list, somebody who was already in Clubhouse can get you in. So my at Clubhouse is my name, Nalena Kai. You can see it right behind me, N-A-L-E-I-G-H-N-A-K-A-I. Mostly all of my platform is just my name. My website, www.nalenakai.com. I also have www.nktribecallsuccess.com, uh, www.thecavalcadeofauthors.com, www.thenightsofthecastle.com, www.thekingsofthecastle.com. All of those platforms, and they all point to different places on one website. That's how I saved money so I didn't have to have a kabillion different websites. One website, make sure as authors you buy your real name domain and your author name domain. And sometimes you may, if your book has a special title, like I have everywomanneedsawife.com, I have opendoormarriage.com. So I bought those early enough. You want to buy them before someone else does. And then when you finally decide that you want it, you're gonna have to try to get it from them. And there are some people, as soon as you hit big, they go up and buy up your stuff just for that, just for that reason alone. Hey, Unique, uh, it was my phone. You have grown so much since I met you and your son in 2005. You are an inspiration. Oh, Kim Robinson, author of Ruin the Gumbo. How you doing? How you doing? All right, thank you so much. Hey, Marie, that's our VPA in the house, Marie Lackey, uh, your angel VPA. I'm going to be wrapping up in nine minutes. Are you sure? Sure, sure, we don't have any questions. Um, let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. We did the town hall. Oh, another thing that I've done while we went, soon as we hit, was you know how they always had that little um, saying? Ooh, there's an app for that. Well, the tribe, we have an app. Uh, the Literary Cafe app that you can pull down on Google as well, Google Play, on Android, uh, and the App Store. So it has everything in there for new releases, sneak peeks, author interviews, giveaways, writing seminars, and publishing workshops. Uh, I do have a series of publishing workshops. Let me see if I can find um, that uh, link for you and I'll drop it in there. That has, I have different seminars that were recorded, uh, writing, publishing, editing, author branding, and um, book covers, marketing, promotion, and publishing. They are, they don't cost a lot, they're 50 bucks, but they are worth it for you too. It's about two hours each one and they will help you in whatever aspects that you feel that you need. Okay, here we go. Let me stop sharing the app. Please download the app today. Let me drop in the link here. Hey, Shakira, that's my brother in the pen. I talked about you earlier. So here we go. We're gonna drop the link here that you can get. He did the advanced writing course, the recorded session uh, Shakir did. So um, you'll want to pick up, there's any one that you can, um, like if you just need the writing or you just need the marketing and promotion, which is more expansive than what we covered tonight because this was supposed to be quick and dirty. Yes, Mina, hey, Mina. Um, 
she did the, uh, she said the seminars are excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She has her cover. Her cover is on one of these that my son designed her cover. Let me see if I can find some tribe covers here. Yes, the shoes one here. Let me, let me show you guys these covers done by J.L. Woodson of Woodson Creative Studio. His email address is J.L. Woodson, J as in Jeremy, L as in Lamarck, uh, J.L. Woodson at woodsonstudio.com. So here is Mina. See hers, the one with the shoe. Look at the, those shoes are sexy. Oh my God. So you have, I know you guys are familiar with Marzake Scott. She has two of her covers he did, Gemini Rising and Next Lifetime. Um, Shakir's Love, Lust and Beautiful Liars on here. Pat George Walker, Christian Comedy right here. And of course, this one from our newbie. She's the baby of the family. Shakina Jackson, Acts of Betrayal and UM Haram. She was here tonight. Michelle Sims. Also down here, we have the, the real housewives of the Bible. So that is something. Um, those are covers. There's just some of the covers designed by him. This is a suspense, Slay the Dragon, another one based in Chicago, Redemption. Um, so all of those covers, Sugar Coated Deception. This is a self-help book, Chasing Rainbows. So those covers, having dynamic covers are everything. <laughs> yes, I love my cover. Um, my J.L. Woodson, yes. Hey, Marze. Hey, I love the matte finish on Gemini. You know, that was a suggestion by my son. I didn't realize, you know, we've only been used to uh, the glossy ones, but having that matte fit, it feels like velvet. Yes. And people, once you put it in a reader's hand and they start stroking it, that book is there. They stroke it, say, hey, you want to take that home with you in love. <laughs> so all of his work is exceptional. Yes. And that's part of the battle. Uh, J.L. Woodson is the bomb. Yes, he is. Hey. So I've got four minutes. Any other questions? Please, please, please drop them in. Like I said, normally the word free and my name is not in the same sentence. So getting this free information is key. Okay. Well, on that note, I am going to wrap it up by saying you can follow me on all the platforms. I'm on BookBub. That's another thing that authors need to be on BookBub. Um, I'm on Goodreads as well as I have my Amazon author page. I'm on Pinterest. Do not sleep on Pinterest. It is not something you have to heavily maintain. Throw some pictures up there. Um, throw some pictures up there of, of characters that represent, that represent the characters in your book. J.L. Woodson. How do you get in touch with J.L. Woodson? J.L. Woodson at Woodson Studio. I'm typing this in the chat.com. Bam. There you go. Uh, email is best. Um, all of his work is exceptional. Yes, I see that. Thank you. Um, I'm also on, uh, like I said, BookBub. Every place that readers are is where you as an author should be. BookBub, Amazon Author Central page, uh, Goodreads. And there's a lot of things that you can do in market and promote on LinkedIn as well. So do it under your publishing house. Uh, so everywhere, Instagram, Facebook author page, um, now, like I said, Clubhouse, Twitter. Twitter doesn't get as much engagement for sales. That's more like peer to peer, like if you're trying to reach up to publishers, editors, acquisitions editors, uh, celebrities, that sort of thing. But Instagram and Facebook was where I've, I've collected a lot more sales. They are made more connections with readers and kept connections with readers. But my mailing list, I cannot stress enough to you about mailing lists collecting those email addresses for you to have. Those are yours until they click, click and say, we are divorced, I'm unsubscribing. And that's why you don't send them a lot, maybe once a month to keep your name up there. That's about it. But those cookbooks, those anthologies, those series, those have broken us out to more readers than any other platform that we've used. So I just wanna make sure uh, that you know. And I wanna thank Ebony Evans and I, Tina, and all of the crew at ICU reading and chatting for allowing me to do this today. Um, much appreciated for the takeover. We had a great time. And one of these days you'll let us do a, a full takeover and you can see what it's really like. It's, it's, it's awesome, but we enjoyed the one gotta go. People were still answering the next day, even after we closed off the prizes and it was wonderful giving out the prizes too. We were so happy that the readers were so interactive. So we thank you. 
Thank you, thank you from the tribe. And I thank you for myself and for number one son. I think he got the biggest plug out of this tonight. Um, once again, Melena Kai, everywomanneedsawife.com, opendoormarriage.com. Um, my books are everywhere. Books are sold, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, Apple. Don't say iBooks, it's Apple Books um, as well. And if you're going to try to get your books on Apple and get some of their special promotions, Make sure your book is listed on your website that it is available for them because they do come on your web page and they will scout it out. Um, as well as, of course, Amazon. Um, so that being said, I'm going to say good night to you all. And I will still look at the post for another maybe 15 minutes or so uh, to see if there's any questions that people just thought of after. Oh, shoot, I forgot to ask. Yeah, you probably did. So go ahead and drop the question in and I will definitely answer it because uh, I am a member of ICU, so they'll, I'll see it. Tracy, I'm glad you were here. Um, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Ebony, yes, you rock. Thank you for your time and knowledge. I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to share. Once again, good night, everybody. And you have a happy holidays. And if you have a drink, have one for me. Good night.